What up everybody? Back again here with our area unit. Today we're going to be talking about discovering the area formula for rectangles. So let's uncover our objective today. Our objective today, today I will be able to discover and use the area formula for rectangles that are covered with unit squares. So last lesson we talked about what area was and how we can count the unit squares. Today we're going to take the next step by introducing and discovering the area formula. Before we do that, we want to talk some math vocabulary. That way we make sure we're all talking the same language throughout the lesson. Our first math vocabulary is the word dimension. A dimension is a measurement of length in one direction. So here we have a line, a rectangle, and a cube. All right, so a line is what we would call one dimensional. You might call it 1D because it only has a measurement of length in one direction. So let's say this was three meters, all right? We measured, but only in one direction. A square is what we would call 2D. A lot of times you might hear this term when you're talking about video games, okay? Or flat Stanley, flat Stanley is 2D. In other words, it only has two dimensions that you can measure. It has the length, which could be three, and then it has a width, which could be maybe four. Those are the two dimensions that you can measure this figure with. And then our cube is three dimensional or 3D. Again, you hear that word a lot with video games. Why is it 3D? Because you can measure it in three dimensions. You have a length, okay? You have a width, or some people would call this a depth now, and then you have the height. Okay, which, I don't know, could be five, cent five meters if we want it to be. So you can measure this cube in three directions, which gives it three dimensions. That's what we're talking about with dimensions. Now, everything we're doing with this unit is going to be in two dimensions. It's going to have length and width, but we have to understand what the word dimension means and then kind of a visual picture of it before we can talk about the rest of our lesson. So if we keep going down, we know that area is the number of unit squares that cover the surface of a figure. And we talked about this one yesterday, so you don't need to write this down. You should be writing these math vocabularies down every lesson in your notes, unless I've told you otherwise. If you don't have your notes, you can check out the description for this video. And there is a link to a Google Doc that you can either print or just type on if you can't print it. So we talked about this one last lesson quite a bit, but this is the focus of our whole unit area. Area is the number of unit squares that cover the surface, or some people would say the inside of a figure. Then our last one today is formula. A formula is an equation used to solve a problem that always works. It's a math rule, okay? When you get a formula to find something or to help you solve a problem, it will always work. And so we're gonna be discussing the area formula today and where that is derived from or where it comes from. Before we do that though, we need to hit the rewind button. And we're rewinding back to when you first started to multiply. One of the first strategies you learned how to multiply with was probably an array, right? So here we have two different arrays. And if you remember, an array has columns and rows. So you use this array to help you solve a multiplication problem, right? And when you first started, you probably counted by ones, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, to help you find the product. And then eventually you might've started skip counting and that's awesome too. But before you can do any of that, you have to know what are the two factors that you're supposed to be multiplying. So when you learned about arrays, you learned that you have rows, okay? Rows go side to side. And you also have columns, columns go up and down. So this array showed me that I have three columns right here, and in each column, I have five circles, okay? So when you would write this, just as you learned, you do three times five, and then that would equal 15. And again, you probably first started counting by ones, and then you probably moved up to skip counting by fives, and you might have even drawn circles around your columns when you first started to help you visualize that multiplication is repeated addition. Instead of skip counting, you learn that you could learn your basic facts and just multiply these, and that would save you a ton of time. And the way you did that was by understanding that multiplication is repeated addition. So when you do three times five, and that equals 15, really what you're saying is you have three groups of five. And then as you moved on in your array journey, 
you realize that, hey, I can turn the array and it won't change it. So instead of now having three columns, I could have five columns and then have three in each column. And that would change your factors because now you don't have three groups of five, you have five groups of three. But that still gives you the same product of 15. And then you might have drawn again your, your five groups right here and circled them so you could see how many were in each group and that's totally fine. But what you started connecting again is instead of skip counting or doing repeated addition, you could solve it using your basic fact knowledge and make it a lot quicker because multiplication is in fact repeated addition. Our time sign says groups of. You have five groups of three. So instead of doing three plus three plus three plus three plus three, five groups of three gives you that answer a lot quicker. And again, that higher level thought that you learned was it didn't matter how you wrote the array, you could do three groups of five or five groups of three, it's still going to give you the same answer. So we want to take this array knowledge you already have and apply it to the area knowledge that you learned last lesson to help come up with our formula today. But before we do that, we need to review what we did last lesson. So last lesson, we talked about finding the area of the rectangle, right? And how many square units we needed to cover the surface of a figure, okay? And so again, that's kind of, a lot of people say covering the inside and that's okay too, but we like to call it the surface because that's going to help you when you get to higher level math. And we counted them by ones, right? We did one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we recognized even a pattern that if there's six in the first row, then that means we could just skip count by six, right? So six, 12, 18, 24. And we found that the area is 24 square units. Or you could say unit squared, but we want to recognize that we're covering our surface with squares. That's why we have to say that at the end of the number. Now that's great, but that kind of takes a long time, especially if you are counting by ones. How can we use our array knowledge to help us make this a little bit quicker? So here's the exact same rectangle. We already know the answer for this area is 24 square units. I'm just going to put SU just to save us some space and we did that by counting one by one but that could take a long time. Well let's look closely at what these squares are making. The squares actually seem to be making an array. So if we take this array out to help us figure this out let's look at the multiplication equation that the array shows us. So here we have six columns and we had four in each column so our multiplication equation could say six groups of four, and that's gonna give us 24. So instead of counting one by one, we can start looking at these area questions like it's an array because it is. It has columns and it has rows and they're not overlapping, they're right next to each other. So in fact, when we're doing area, we are solving an array question. So instead of counting one by one, we can start to use our multiplication knowledge. Now, an important part about this array, like just like we reviewed, is if you turn it, you can actually write a, another multiplication equation. If we turn it, now we can say four groups of six, but just turning the array doesn't change our product, it's still 24. And you can do the same thing with our area question. If we turn the rectangle, our area didn't change, it's just like this array. So to solve for the area of this, we could either do six groups of four, or we could do four groups of six. It just depends on how the rectangles turn. Both of them give us the same exact answer of 24 square units, okay? And that's actually called the commutative property of multiplication. It doesn't matter which way you write your factors. It doesn't matter which way the array is turned. You're still going to get the same product. Now, the important thing to know about rectangles, okay, is Instead of saying that we have four columns, we don't call them columns, even though we're making an array, this is our dimension of width, okay? And so instead of saying we have four columns, we're just gonna say we have four units. And then instead of saying that we have six rows like you would for an array, you, this is another dimension of our rectangle. We're gonna say the length is six units, okay? And it doesn't matter which one you label as your length and which one you label as your width because of what we just reviewed with multiplication. You can turn this rectangle and it would change the dimensions. As long as you're treating it like an array, 
and multiplying one dimension by the other dimension, you're going to get the correct answer. Which means if we can use our dimension of length and width to help us find the area every single time, just like you would use it to help you find the product of an array, that leads us to our area formula. Area equals length times width. This is the formula, this is the rule that will always work. We're gonna take one dimension, our length, and multiply it by the other dimension, our width, and we're gonna read that multiplication sign as groups of. Because really, when you're covering the surface of a shape with square units, you're making an array. Let's take a look at doing an I do problem and using this formula to make it a little bit quicker. So it says use the area formula for rectangles to find the area of this rectangle. So my area formula is length times width. So the first thing I wanna do is find my dimensions, okay? And you don't have to draw the arrows, I'm just kinda of doing it today to show you. So my length right here is six units. My width dimension right here is going to be three units. And so to do this, I'm gonna have six groups of three, okay? So I'm gonna do six times three. I'm gonna use my multiplication knowledge to make this a lot quicker. I'm gonna say my answer is 18 square units. Now, some people really get caught up in trying to figure out which one the length is and which one the width is. I always like to say length because it's L is the long side, but in reality, it doesn't matter because if I clone the same array and then turn it this way. Now my top dimension is going to be three, right? And I'm going to have three groups of six. Okay. And again, that'd be units. And this would be units because we're talking about dimensions here. And then to solve it, I could do three times six, but I'm still going to get the same answer. So because of commutative property, it doesn't matter which one the length and which one the width is. Don't get caught up in that. You're trying to figure out, okay, what's one dimension? And then what's my second dimension? Because you're making an array. How many columns do you have? And then how many do you have in each column? Now, before we do our we do problem, I want to take one second to talk about a misconception that a lot of people have, okay? And sometimes it can be confusing because they like to label all the sides and then they want to do six times three times six times three. That doesn't make any sense because if you conceptually understand that when you're finding the area, you're really finding the answer to an array question, you can't do six groups of three times three groups of six and think that you're gonna get the correct answer. You only need one length and one width because you have columns and rows. Those are the two factors you need to help you find the answer to an array problem. And they're the only two factors you need to help you find the answer to an area problem. So when you're finding area, you should only be multiplying two numbers to help you do it. Let's take a look at the U-Try problem. Again, if you already tried this one by yourself, go ahead and pause it right now and solve it. If you're not, that's totally fine. You can do it as another we do problem. Hopefully you just paused it and now you're ready to check your work. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to label my dimensions. So I know that I have one, two, three, four, five, six units for my length or width, whichever dimension you want that to be. And then on the side here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six again. So again, this is going to be a square. So if I think about this as an array, I have six columns with six in each. So I have six groups of six, and that will tell me how many squares make up my array, which will tell me the area. So my area is going to be six times six. Instead of counting by ones, I can use my basic fact knowledge of 36 square units. And I know that it would take me 36 non-overlapping, again, repeating that from our last lesson, they cannot be overlapping squares, 36 square units to cover this figure. If you don't take anything with you other than this, this is what we want you to take with you after this lesson. The formula for area is area equals length times width. And when you get that from the fact that when you cover a rectangle with square units, it makes an array. So we can use multiplication to help us solve it. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate you spending your time with Instructive Beats. Check out our area and perimeter song. We'd love to have you continue working on our area unit playlist with us. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Instructive Beats, out.